Welcome back everyone to 6.6. .6. Now last time in video one we just got done sketching uh, some of these inverse trigonometric functions and their derivatives to see that the hey these things make sense. right? So let's actually use some of these rules though and calculate out uh, some derivatives uh, and integrals using our newfound properties. Let's get to it. All right so here we have a few relatively easier questions. Uh, the first one take a derivative of cosine inverse with a little bit of chain rule thrown in there. So the first thing, the derivative of cosine inverse is supposed to be negative one divided by one minus, well, sorry, square root of one minus, and then the quantity, whatever's inside. Uh, so five to the x, that squared, times, now the chain rule says we need to take the derivative of five to the x, so that's gonna be five to the x times the natural log of five. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, let's rewrite it one last time, just make it look a little bit nicer. So this would be the negative, natural log of five times five to the x. And then we could simplify this down. This is gonna be five to the two x. Uh, one minus that all in the square root. So there we go. Now we have an integral. Uh, looking at this, this kind of looks like a uh, tangent inverse, right? So let's use u substitution. My u is gonna be two x, so therefore du is gonna be two dx. So I can solve uh, for dx is one half du. And now let's go ahead and make the trades. So this is gonna be an integral of one over u squared plus one. And then I'm gonna bring the three and the two together and make three halves du. And we can bring that three halves out front. And we know when we integrate this thing, this now looks exactly like tangent inverse. So tangent inverse of u, uh, really the three halves times that plus my constant of integration. So therefore, uh, substituting back in, instead of u, I'm going to put 2x, and there we go. All right, now I have a few more theorems and definitions here uh, for us. Definitions for uh, inverses of all these other kind of more rare trig functions. So let's see, cosecant inverse. Yes, it's defined uh, by cosecant of y is equal to x. Likewise, secant and cotangent. So that's how these things are defined. They have specified domains. Uh, and the big thing here is that these y values, uh, and these ones are a little bit different. So I'm using interval notation here, zero to pi over two. You can go up to and including pi over two, and then you jump for a little bit. And we're gonna jump uh, to pi to three pi over two. So that's where y needs to live. And likewise, uh, for secant, have the exact same thing. And then for cotangent, uh, this is going to be going from 0 to pi. And again, we choose these things so that it passes the horizontal line test so that the inverse function is actually a function. Okay, so I invite you, there's uh, a little bit of an interesting story about why you choose these ones in the book. I invite you to read these things. It'll help with uh, some of your web work problems. Okay, so when we go ahead and take derivatives, these are the ones that we already know, and then these are the new ones, right? So if I want to take the derivative of inverse cosecant, that's going to be negative 1 over x times root x squared minus 1. The derivative of secant inverse is going to be the same thing as cosecant, but just without the negative sign. And then likewise, the derivative of cotangent inverse is going to be just like tangent inverse, but with a negative sign. So you can see that these things are very related. Okay, if we can take the derivatives, then certainly we can take the antiderivatives and go backwards, right? So if I want to integrate one over x squared plus one, that's going to be tangent inverse. And then if I wanted to integrate one over root one minus x squared, that's going to be sine inverse. Of course, I could do this with any of them up above, but these are just a few. All right, now this is actually a really good example, and this comes up uh, as a formula in the book and how do you treat when you have this a squared here? So instead of one squared, we have a squared, and I want to be able uh, to integrate this. And so the idea here, uh, if you were to pause and think about this for a while, is that maybe we should divide by a squared on both top and on bottom. Now, if we do this, the claim is, is now you get that one where you want there to be a one. So this is gonna be, let's see, x over a, the quantity squared, right, when I start distributing this, and then the other ones cancel out. So now this, 
I can apply a u substitution for. So u is going to be x over a. So therefore, du uh, is going to be 1 over a dx. So now if I substitute that in, well, it looks like one of my 1 over a's gets eaten up. But there's another one there still. And then let's see, instead of x over a quantity squared, it's going to be u squared plus 1. So now this right here, uh, I know this is going to become tangent inverse. Still have my constant 1 over a along for the ride. And so finally, I get 1 over a times tangent inverse of x over a plus my constant. So this is a great formula to memorize to know uh, it does come up a decent amount. All right, now we're moving on to the more challenging examples. Right, so those other ones were kind of, uh, you know, at a medium level. So these ones are more challenging. So evaluate uh, this integral. And the idea here is that you may want to complete the square. So, okay, let's take the hint and let's actually complete the square and see what we get. Uh, and remember, for completing the square, I usually start off with just the quadratic and the linear term. So you look at uh, x squared plus 2x, and you try to think, what would I need to add to it in order to have a perfect square trinomial, right? And so the thing you would have to add in this case would be 1. And if you were to add 1 to this here, uh, well, then you'd get x plus 1, that quantity, squared. And of course, you can check this, right? If you FOIL out that right-hand side, you should get the left-hand side. Now, we don't have this. We have x squared plus 2x plus 5. So let's add 4 to both sides of the equation up there. And now we have a nice completed square. So the idea here, so instead of integrating our 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 5, we're going to integrate 1 over x plus 1 quantity squared plus 4, is that this looks kind of like tangent inverse. Well, it looks kind of like this, except for instead of x squared, we have x plus 1 squared. And then our a in this case would be 2. So let's do a u substitution. Let's say u is equal to x plus 1. And therefore, actually, du is x equal to dx in this case. So this is going to be, uh, let's see, u squared plus 4 du. And we're going to, of course, integrate that. Now, using the formula that we've derived up here, we know our a should be 2 right, because 2 squared is 4. So I get 1 half tangent inverse of u over 2, again, our a is 2, plus c. And so therefore, we get 1 half tangent inverse of, and now instead of u, I'm plugging in x plus 1. And that's all there is to it. But I mean, right, it's not at all obvious that completing the square would be such a good idea. So that's why we needed the hint. But keep this in mind as you uh, continue to do your homework problems and quizzes and exams, things like this. The final example I have here, again, you should kind of think about pausing and trying some stuff and doing this one on your own. Uh, but again, there's a trick. So the trick is you should break this apart, or that's at least one good idea. So if you break apart this fraction, you can make this the integral of x over 1 plus x squared dx plus the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. And now that second one we know, that's just the formula of tangent inverse. The first one, again, look at it for a little bit, but the claim is a u substitution should work out well here. And so we see our x dx here. And so x dx is going to be the same thing, oops, as 1 half du. And again, who would think that uh, breaking apart these fractions would be such a great idea? Uh, but it does really work out. It makes it a lot easier to solve. So we integrate our 1 over u. And that's going to give me a natural log uh, of the absolute value of u. And thinking, though, right, our u is 1 plus x squared. So 1 plus x squared, well, this is always going to be positive. So do we really need those absolute values? Eh, probably not. And then let's go ahead and finish writing this all out. And there is our final answer. 
All right, so these were definitely a little more difficult uh, type of problem, but we now have a pretty good idea of all the different types of things that we can differentiate and integrate now with these newfound properties of uh, inverse trigonometric functions. I'll see you next time in 6.7, hyperbolic functions.